Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include The EU mulls aid to industries to cope with costs of renewable energy. EU readying invasive alien species hit list. And European Union approves Mercedes-Benz Eco Thermo Engine Cover as fuel-saving eco-innovation. EU said to fine ball-bearing makers to settle cartel probe, plus intended and birth mother in surrogacy entitled to maternity leave, says the European Court of Justice. It's Friday, 28th of March. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is The Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. EU mulls aid to industries to cope with costs of renewable energy. The European Union is considering allowing state aid to 62 energy-intensive industries, including aluminium and petroleum product manufacturers, to help with the cost of boosting renewable energy, a draft EU document has shown. The European Commission, the EU's regulatory arm, will approve support in the form of reductions in environmental taxes if the beneficiaries cover at least 20% of the additional costs, according to state aid guidelines for 2014 to 2020. The document, to be adopted by the Commission on April the 9th, will define state support rules to help spur renewables as nations, including Germany, call for permission to use tools that would shield industry from rising power bills during the EU shift to a low-carbon economy. Now, this needs to be looked at more carefully. As you'll notice from my coverage earlier this week, EU state aid rules prohibit the UK government from further investment in nuclear fusion. If this new legislation coming on stream in April allowed state aid, this would be a great opportunity for the UK to invest in the technology. There is, however, a conflict as in light of the success of UK-based jet fusion tourists in Cambridge, an expanded project, ITER, is now being built in France. Now, more details on both projects can be found on our website by searching for JET, J-E-T, or ITER, I-T-E-R. The EU is readying invasive alien species hit list. Killer slugs, Asian ladybirds and American muskrats will all be blacklisted under plans drawn up by Brussels to stop invasive species from threatening European wildlife, an EU source said on Tuesday. European Union institutions have agreed to draw up an open-ended list of rapidly spreading species that damage the environment and cause health hazards, the source said on condition of anonymity. From 2016, species such as Asian harlequin ladybirds, which threaten native species in Britain, as well as butterflies and other insects, will be banned for sale, import or release across the block. The so-called killer slug from the Iberian Peninsula, which eats weaker species, will also be blacklisted, along with a type of ornamental knotweed now rife in France, and US muskrats, which damage canals by burrowing into the banks. I can see it now. Europol officers given new powers to detain and deport these species. Freeze, you dirty muskrat! Where are your peppers? EU approves Mercedes-Benz Eco-Thermo engine cover as fuel-saving eco-innovation. The European Commission has approved the new Eco-Thermo cover engine compartment encapsulation in the Mercedes-Benz S300 Bluetech Hybrid as a manufacturer's eco-innovation. Insulating buildings saves energy. Mercedes engineers have adapted a similar idea in the car. With insulating partitions in the engine compartment and a radiator shutter that is closed when the car is at a standstill, the heat inside the Mercedes-Benz S300 Bluetech Hybrid remains in the engine compartment. Even if the vehicle is stopped for some time, when the engine is started again, the higher temperature reduces friction in the engine, minimizes cold start losses and cuts CO2 emissions. 
Tests performed at Mercedes-Benz indicate an average fuel saving of up to 1.5 litres per full 70-litre fuel tank. Around 2.1% saving over the course of a year. The art equivalent more detail the technology and engineering ideas in play, along with other eco-saving ideas such as Audi's low-power LED lighting. EU said to fine ball bearing makers to settle cartel probe. The European Union will fine automotive ball bearing makers as soon as tomorrow in an antitrust settlement, said three people familiar with the case that led three firms to make provisions totaling more than $1 billion. About six ball bearing makers have agreed to settle the case, said the people who asked not to be named because the decision isn't yet public. EU Competition Commissioner Joaquin Almunia told EU lawmakers today that he would announce a price-fixing decision in a car parts investigation tomorrow. Cartels to fix the prices of car parts are devastating for both Japanese and European car manufacturers and consumers who pay too much for components and the final vehicles. Now, this has been a problem for a long time. I'm personally a keen motorcycle rider, and a favourite motorcycle of mine was the Kawasaki ZXR750. Now, back in the day, you could buy one of these assembled and ready to go from the showroom for about £6,500. Or you could buy one as parts and put it together yourself for around £18,000. This demonstrates a significant price discrepancy. Intended and birth mother in surrogacy entitled to maternity leave, says ECJ. Both the intended and birth mother in surrogacy agreements are entitled to maternity leave when a child is born, according to a legal opinion published by the European Court of Justice. The decision, based on the case of a mother from Newcastle upon Tyne who works for the NHS, requires the two women to split the allocation of paid leave and each must receive a minimum of two weeks. Now, although issued by an advocate general of the ECJ, such initial opinions are usually adopted as final judgments by the full court. The ECJ, which sits in Luxembourg, is the highest tribunal in the European Union and decides on EU law. It will encourage the UK government to press ahead with planned reforms. Now, what's interesting to note here is that the ECJ will encourage the UK government to press ahead with planned reforms. What this means is that the UK government will be forced to implement legislation or to amend current paternity maternity leave legislation to fall in line with the European Union regulations. Now, this transposition of legislation is what's termed by the European Union direct effect. Um, and in truth, it basically, a transposition means simply rebranding a legal document from being a EU legal requirement to a member state legal requirement. It's this transposition of legislation that creates so much of the legal framework here in the UK, which can be traced back to the European Union. Now, the article goes on to say, the NHS employee, identified only as CD, began caring for and breastfeeding the child within an hour of its birth in August 2011. She and her partner subsequently became the registered parents and she requested time off and was granted leave at the hospital's discretion. CD, however, pursued the point to an employment tribunal, arguing that she should have been legally entitled to the leave. Following on from the ongoing televised debates on Europe from LBC, Sky News and the BBC, the team here at the unit will be holding a special live show next Thursday the 3rd of April at 12 noon. Sue Doidge, Trevor Coleman, Andrew Fear and myself and guests will be taking part in this show where we will review the nuances of the debates between Nigel Farage and Nick Clegg on the topic of the European Union. Using Google Hangouts on air, the show will be broadcast live on the front page of our website, and you can be part of the show in a number of ways. If you want to ask specific questions, then you can email those to us. You can also ask questions before and during the show via Twitter. Simply mention at the unit in your post. 
You can join our community, the unit on Google+, or ping me directly on Google+, and request an invitation to join the Hangout as a guest on the show. So, remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions and post comments about our stories, and even get involved in the shows. For all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.